Good evening, Francisco, Carlos Humberto, and Abigail. Welcome to today's section. Thank you so much for being on time. I see Matiel is joining the meeting too. Thank you for being on time. And uh, as we discussed yesterday, for today we will make a review of the passive voice. So I gathered some information for you and also exercises for us to be practicing. Um, I only have a four connected now. I got Carlos, Miguel, and Abigail and Francisco. So thank you so much. Um, we're going to start right away in honor to the people who's early on time. That's a start. Gertrudis is joining us too. Are you still driving, Magdiel? Or you're at home already? And Francisco, are you going to be just listening or did you solve your issues with the internet? Are you working? Aymara? Hello, good evening. <laughs> I, how do you say I have hot? <laughs> They're hot, it's hot. It's hot, very hot. Well, they... Maybe it's going to rain. Mm -hmm. Yeah, probably. And how was your day? Did you have a good day besides the hot water? Yes, I have a good day. <laughs> Normally. A regular day, a normal day. <laughs> Not normally. Okay. Okay, that's nice. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, so, ready for today's review? I'll start sharing the screen. I sent you this through the WhatsApp group a couple of minutes ago. And so for today, we're going to start with our reviews about the topics that we have been studying. And the first topic is going to be the passive voice. As we have been studying this, we're going to continue from there. And yesterday, it told me that you were having issues identifying the objects. And it's probably when we have um, certain kind of verbs that we're going to discuss. Uh, for this one, I have this. What are subjects and objects, uh, active and passive voice? Subject and object. Person or thing doing an activity is the subject. Quien hace la acción es el sujeto, ¿verdad? De la oración. Now, object is the thing or person on whom the activity is done. Eh, el objeto ya sería la cosa o persona sobre quien la actividad es hecha, ¿verdad? Eh, y aquí tenemos un ejemplo. I sería el, el sujeto, el que hace la acción. Purchase eh, sería la actividad o la acción. A laptop is the object, como ya habíamos eh, visto eh, anteriormente, estos digamos que son un poquito simples, ¿verdad? De identificar. Pero a veces hay como ciertas uh, um, oraciones en las que no es tan fácil identificarlos, pero vamos a ir para allá. Um, in active voice, cuando es voz activa, la normal, ¿verdad? Normalmente hablamos en voz activa. The first, uh, there is a subject and in the end is the object. Hablando así normalmente, primero tenemos el sujeto y luego el objeto, que es sobre quién o recae la acción. En los pasivos al revés, primero es el objeto, ya que queremos enfocarnos en eso eh, y no en quién hace la acción, ¿verdad? ¿Qué sería lo que va después el sujeto? Entonces, para... Identificar los objetos y transformar las oraciones en pasiva. Tengo estas 
oracioncitas. The boy plays soccer. What is the object in that sentence? The boy plays soccer. Can you tell the me? Boy? The boy? Soccer teacher. Uh, yes, soccer. Soccer is the object. Entonces, y estas está en presente simple. Así es que esta nos eh, la vamos a conjugar a pasivo presente simple. Ya identificamos el objeto que es soccer. Entonces, ahí tendríamos que empezar la oración para trasladarla a pasiva, ¿verdad? Subject. El verbo va a ir en pasado participar. Y digamos que el, el auxiliar o verbo sería siempre is. Soccer is. Soccer is played by the boy. Now, Alice practices a second language. What is the object? A second language. Uh -huh. Ese es el object. A second language. Ese sería a second language. Entonces ahí van a empezar la oración. Cuando ya la tengan lista, pueden levantar la manita o ponerla en el chat. Alexis. Uh, maybe a second language practiced by Alice. Mm -hmm. A second language? Uh, practice. 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 By Alice. Alice. Very good, Alexis. Thank you so much. Solo el is, creo que no estamos escuchando por ahí, pero Aymara nos ayudó. Excellent. Thank you so much, Alexis and Aymara. A uh, second language is practiced by Alice. Thank you. Now, many people buy unnecessary things. What is the object? What is the object of that sentence? Many people buy unnecessary things. Unnecessary, unnecessary things. Thing. Excellent, unnecessary things. Acuérdense que en este caso, y a veces es por ahí que creo que viene o podría venir cierta confusión, porque ahí tenemos things y podrían pensar que ese sería solo things. Pero tenemos, tenemos el adjetivo que está diciendo ¿Ah? qué tipo de cosas es. Cosas innecesarias. Entonces se pone junto con el adjetivo porque no lo podemos dejar el adjetivo por ahí solito. Ya que es el que me está describiendo qué tipo de cosas. Unnecessary things. Muy bien. Así es que ya identificamos el object que sería unnecessary things. Now let's put it into passive. Causes car accident.
Have you finished the sentence? Hello, teacher. Hello. The third, the third sentences. Well, yes, it's the third. <clears throat> I think uh, unnecessary things are are buying by many people. Mm -hmm. Unnecessary things are. Ahí vamos bien. Unnecessary yeah. things are. El verbo tiene que ir en participle. Buying. Ah, I bought. Bought. Uh huh. I Unnecessary bought. things are bought by, by, by many people. Many people. Excellent. Thank you so much, Martina. Um, thank you so much, too. Uh, you're welcome. Cell phone distractions causes car accidents. Where is the object? Car accident. Excellent. That's the object. Car accident. Now let's um, let's uh, write it in the passive. Remember, simple present passive. Es lo que estamos haciendo con estas simple present passive. Y pues hasta ahorita vamos haciendo un buen trabajo conjugando is, are y luego verb in participle. Let me know when you're ready. Could be car accidents are caused because of cell phone distraction. Excellent. Perfect, Martia. Thank you so much. That's correct. Now let's move to the next one. That's the last one. My dog eats special food. What is the object? A special food? Special food, excellent. No solo food, sino que también el adjetivo que la describe. Special food. Mm -hmm. Special food eaten by my dog. Yes, solo me faltó una cosita por ahí que no escuché. Ah, special food is eaten by my dog. Excellent. Thank you so much. Special food is eaten by my dog. Perfect. Thank you so much, Alexis. Creo que fue. No logré ver quién fue, but I think. Yes, yes. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you so much. Now, active voice en la voz eh, activa, a veces usamos el pronombre directo, ¿verdad? Like uh, he, she, it, I, we, and they. Pero en la pasiva, cuando estamos diciendo el, 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 en pasiva utilizamos el, acá lo tengo, el indirect pronoun. Si es he, en pasiva sería him. She, en pasiva usaríamos her. By her, by him. Um, it, bueno, ahí está mal, sería it, right? Siempre el mismo. Eh, creo que se desconfiguró aquí, pero ajá. Um, I sería me. They sería them. Y for we sería us. This is just like a review. 
Esta es la otra parte de los passive verbs with two objects, que creo que es la que también me mencionaban, que a veces les confunde al tratar de identificar cuál sería el object. Entonces, en la anterior hicimos un excelente trabajo, teníamos solo un object, pero a veces vemos que hay dos. Entonces, por ejemplo, aquí I sent my friends a picture. Entonces, en ese dicen, ok, entonces, ¿cuál es el object? ¿Es my friend o is a picture? ¿Ya? Entonces, ¿cómo sabemos? Siempre vamos a, a, a ver a quién se dirigió la acción. En este caso, como dice, I sent my friends a picture. Entonces, yo soy el sujeto. Enviar es el verbo. El, el object es quien recibe o a quien dirigimos la acción. En este caso sería... Ajá. My friends. Uh, my friends, ajá. Uh -huh. Entonces, ese sería lo que vamos a mover en la passive. Y empezaríamos ahí. My friends were sent a picture. Y ahí le podríamos poner by me. Esto es opcional, ¿verdad? Como el hechor, quien hace la acción no es tan importante. En este caso, no podemos no mencionarlo. Como está el ejemplo ahí. My friends were sent a picture. Siempre es el, el someone aquí eh, y puede cambiar. Si um, con to, si ponemos el to, podemos dejar a nuestros amigos a, al final y decir a picture was sent to my friends. Entonces, se puede hacer de ambas formas, así como lo tienen ilustrado acá. Pero si es la, la segunda, tenemos que poner el to o el for y el someone. En este caso, to my friend. Así que si hay dos objects, pueden hacerlo de esa forma. Empezar, si es alguien, el, el, uno de los objects, empezar con él, con el someone, ¿verdad? En este caso, my friend. Luego la estructura sigue con el verbo en pasivo y luego el, el otro object que lo dejamos de último. O podríamos usar una prepos el, el to o el for con esa persona, con ese someone, que sería uno de los objetos, y empezar con la cosa en sí, no con la persona. A picture was sent to my friend. Si sí tenemos que agregarle el to o el for si fuera el caso. Y ahí tenemos verbos con los que se puede usar to. Es give, lend, offer, pass, promise, read, sell, send, show, tell y write. Eh, for podemos usar bring, buy, Cook, find, get, or make. Así es que no hay como que mucho de qué preocuparse. Cuando vean dos objects, pueden hacerlo de cualquiera de estas dos formas. Y aquí hay un poco más de explicación. Y ahorita recordando, ¿verdad? Que sí son temas gramaticales bastante eh, Fuertecitas y la gramática, creo que para la gran mayoría, incluso en español, es un poquito mm, pesada, un poquito, eh, no digamos imposible, pero sí no vamos a mentir y a decir que es fácil. Es un poco difícil, entonces eh, prefiero explicarla en español. Pero igual, si tienen algún eh, comentario o, o preferirán que sigamos en inglés, me lo hacen saber y yo con gusto. ¿Verdad? Eh, todo es comunicación y lo pueden hacer en mensaje directo si ustedes gustan y no me molesta para nada. Uh, in passive sentence, the subject is the object of the corresponding active sentence. Like someone said something. Someone, something was said by somebody. Es lo mismo que estamos viendo, ¿verdad? Alguien dijo algo, en pasiva sería 
algo fue dicho por alguien. Y siempre vamos jugando. En este caso es pasado simple, el que tenemos ahí como ejemplo. Eh, hay algunos verbos que toman dos objetos, que es lo que vimos ahorita. Eh, estos verbos son bring, get, give, make, offer, promise, send y show. Después de esos verbos tiene que ir un object. Y pueden tomar dos objects. Si ven ahí, I sent el qué? A picture. Ese es un object. ¿A quién? A my friends. Son otro object. ¿Y ¿Qué es lo que vimos anteriormente? Es la misma oración. ¿Verdad? Solo aquí está explicado nuevamente para que quede ahí eh, no solo lo que les he dicho, ¿verdad? Porque pues a veces no, eh, no nos es posible estar escribiendo todo. Así es que ahí les queda escrito lo que acabamos de explicar en la diapositiva anterior. Y ahí nos dice, it is more common, la última parte de las dos opciones que dijimos que son posibles cuando hay un verbo que tiene dos objects. Eh, es posible empezar con... Eh, el passive, en este caso, my friends were sent a pictures. Es más común empezar con, el, con ese alguien que con el algo. En este caso, el alguien son my friends. My friends were sent a picture. Eso es más común que empezar con el algo, ¿verdad? A picture was sent to my friend. Eso es. No es muy común, pero gramaticalmente está correcto. A veces encontramos una forma más fácil que la otra. Y esa es la que se usa. Así es que pues ahí les queda escrito. Y pues si hay preguntas hasta acá. Voy muy rápido. Vamos bien. Seguimos. So far so good teacher. Excelente. Muy bien. Entonces acá. Tienen un común resumen de los tiempos. Esto es solo para que lo tengan ahí. No es que lo vamos a ver toditos. Por lo menos en presente simple, pasado simple. Ya debíamos haberlo visto y paz continuo en los módulos anteriores. Y en este que lo vimos en, en present perfect. Ese fue el que estuvimos practicando más que todo. Y también practicamos el eh, continuo. El presente continuo en passive voice. Ahora vamos a practicar un poco más en pasado simple como review. Pero ahí tienen la ilustración de los tiempos. Presente simple. Un ejemplo de active. I make a cake. En passive, a cake is made. Se ven siempre lo que hicimos anteriormente, ¿verdad? Usamos is, are. Para la passive in the simple present. Y el verbo siempre en participio. Present continuous. I am making a cake. En passive. A cake is being made. Esa la estuvimos practicando ayer. La passive en present continuous. Siempre va a llevar el forma del verbo to be. En este caso is. Puede ser también are. En algunos casos am um, también, si la, la es con I, pero bueno, no, no es muy común usar I en passive. Um, so, a cake is being made. Past simple, I made a cake. En pasado, a cake was made. Vamos a usar was y were y el verbo en past participle. Past continuous, I was making a cake. In passive, I was being, a cake was being made. Siempre utilizando being como el, el auxiliar en, um, del, el, del continuo, ¿verdad? Que usamos be, en este caso sería was or were. Eh, y pues así vamos formándolo para que tengan ahí como ilustradito, está en verde. El present perfect, I have made a cake, a cake has been made. Aquí igual, acuérdense, esto estuvimos haciendo have or has, dependiendo de cómo nos quede, si es objeto singular o plural, ahí vamos 
eh, modificando el auxiliar también. Past perfect, I had made a cake. A cake had been made. Uh, future simple, I will make a cake. In passive, a cake will be made. Y ahí. Aquí seguimos viendo. Tenemos el future can be going to también passive. I'm going to make a cake. A cake is going to be made. Con models, I must make a cake. A cake must be made. Uh, model perfect, I should have made a cake. A cake should have been made. Es solo como para las personas que también les gusta tener como la fórmula que digamos sujeto, auxiliar, verbo, etcétera. Aquí está este cartelito con todas las fórmulas de las anteriores. Para quienes gustan de decir sujeto más verbo más esto más aquello, aquí están los tiempos en active y en passive. ¿Cómo se van formando? Eso, como les digo, es solo como just for you to remember or to know. Si no lo habían visto anteriormente, pues ahí les queda. Eso, pero no nos vamos a meter en, en cada tiempo porque pues no nos daría el, el módulo. Passive, vamos por los más comunes. Passive with double transitive verbs. Ya los que estábamos viendo. Some verbs take two objects. Um, uno es como directo, indirecto, eh, son double transitive verbs, que es lo que estábamos haciendo, ¿verdad? Enfocándonos un poco más aquí en cuando entramos en confusión, ¿verdad? Y ¿Cuál es el objeto? Es por ciertos verbos que toman dos. Um, por ejemplo, en active tenemos, John told my brother a story. Ahí como ven, estamos con pasado simple. John told my brother a story. Entonces tenemos my brother a story. En, es, en esto vemos que John es el sujeto quien hace y luego tenemos los otros dos objetos, eh, my brother y story. Como vemos, vamos a empezar siempre con el persona, el someone, el a quien y my brother was told a story y luego podemos agregar by quien fue el sujeto, by John. And then, con este vamos a hacer los eh, ejercicios que están acá. Aquí tenemos el, eh, ya estudiamos el ejemplo que estaba relacionado a, a, a los que a veces decimos, pero hay dos. Um, tenemos make the following sentence in passive. The police, the police can't find the missing boy. Ahí solo tenemos uno, ¿verdad? Que es the missing boy. Ese sería el objeto, the missing boy. Con eso empezaríamos. Aquí todavía no llegamos a los dos objects, pero sí hay una que tiene los dos.
Let me know when you're ready. Teacher, the number eight could be the missing boy can be to found. Can't be police. found by the police. Yes, that is correct, Matthew. The missing boy can be found mm -hmm. by the police. By the police. Excellent. Yes, my dear. Thank you. The missing boy can be found by the police. Now, the next one is a question. Has anyone repaired the machine? The object is the machine. Y siempre vamos a dejar el, el, el auxiliar de la pregunta al principio. Preguntas casi no practicamos, pero sí. Eh, siempre vamos a empezar o a dejar el auxiliar al principio. Has... Quedaría ahí donde está. Luego seguiríamos con qué? El object. The machine. Has the machine. Uh -huh. Has the machine repaired by anyone? Mm -hmm. But I, almost, I, I have a question. Yes. In this, in this sentence, mm -hmm. is no. Is or no? Pero, eso, aha. Has the machine been? Has the machine been repaired by anyone? Mm -hmm. Correct. Thank you so much, Matiel and Aymara. Now, letter C. They have to postpone the meeting. They have to postpone the meeting. En esta en letter C no necesitamos el bin. Ahí no.
I can try. Uh, the meeting has been postponed by day. By them. Uh -huh. them. Ex That's them. Right. Yes, excellent, Aymara. Thank you so much. Let's continue with letter D. They will open the shopping center in two years. Con will, recuerden que cuando va will, sí necesitamos el be. Sorry, teacher. ¿Cómo quedó la letter C? Letter C. The meeting has to be postponed. Y pueden agregar by them. The meeting had to be postponed by them. Okay. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Hola, hello. Hi. Eh, the shopping center will open in two years by then. Or not? Will be. Be. Will be excellent, Martiel. Will be Mara. opened in past. Open in past. Opened, uh huh. Open. The shopping center. The shopping center we open it by then. Ahí se las escribí en el chat. 
the shopping center will be open in two years by them. Someone is repairing the car. The last, uh, I think, is car is repaired by someone. Ah, uh, algo falta. Esa va present continuous. La de cuando es continuous. The car. Algo le falta. The car is. Was. Mm. Ah, uh, esa es la, ajá, cuando es presente continuo, se pone is. Uh, the car is repairing. Is being. Is being, yes. Is being. Is he or is in? Repair the car is being. I said, let's put in the chat. The car is being repaired. Like, como decir, está siendo reparado. Mm -hmm. The car is being repaired. Okay, now. Prepositional phrases. Some cases you can see that the passive is not limited to cases where the object of an active becomes the subject. Um, no está limitado como ya se pudieron dar cuenta a que el objeto se mueve así, sino que también hay pasivos cuando el noun phrase es, lleva una preposición. Eh, ese se vuelve sujeto. We put the preposition at the end of the clause. Por ejemplo, they have sent for the doctor. Mm -hmm. They have sent for the doctor. Cuando hay preposiciones como ahí, eh, vemos que siempre el, el object es el doctor. Entonces, pero hay una preposición for the doctor. Y entonces decimos, ¿y qué hago con esa eh, preposición? Eh, se pone al final. ¿Ok? Vamos a hacer lo mismo. The doctor has been sent for. La preposición al final. Es lo único que va a, a variar, pero luego es, es básicamente lo mismo que hemos estado haciendo. Solo el que hago con la preposición. Simple, cuando vemos una proposición, esta se manda al final cuando la pasamos a voz pasiva. Tenemos otros dos ejemplos. People are talking about the result. The result are being talked about. They have done away with the tax. The tax has been done away with. So yes, remember that whenever you have a prepositional phrase, the preposition goes at the end for the passive voice. And 
we have some here, some of them, I think we will find this here. Yes, they called upon the president to make a speech. Let's do that one together. Ese sí nos dice siempre to make a speech quedaría junto. To make a speech. Vamos a quedar ya. The president. The president, and it says, was called because it's simple past. The president was called upon. to make a speech. Okay, and that it is the first one. I put it in the chat. The president was called upon to make a speech. Now, um, someone has slept in this bed. ¿Cuál es el object? This bed. Yes, this bed. This bed, this bed. Uh, has. This bed ha, has. Has no has been no, no. yes has been uh -huh. has been slept somewhere uh, by someone no yes have been this bed has been slept in la preposición iría de último this bed has been slept in y ahí le pueden agregar opcional by someone Ah. Ahí se las escribí en el chat también. Ahora, letter C. They are going to laugh at me. To laugh at me? The, the meaning. El significado. The meaning of laugh at me. Es como decir, se van a burlar de mí. Entonces, hay, ahí es el, el, el objeto. They are going to laugh at me. Entonces, ahí el me lo vamos a convertir a hay para pasarlo el objeto al, al, al principio, porque no podemos decir mi, ¿verdad? Hay. Y luego él ya no sería are, sino que am. Um, I am going. La pueden dejar así. I am going to be loved at.
Have you finished letter D? I think is Amy has been looked after by them. Uh, that is, esa es, la activa es presente continuo. They are looking after Emily. Uh -huh. They are looking after Emily. Emily are being? Emily uh, are uh, or Emily is? Uh, sorry, Emily is. Uh -huh. is Emily is been. Is been looking. Looked. El verbo sí siempre uh, va a ir en fase. Uh -huh. en Emily fast. is being looked, looked. after. Okay. Y ahí le puedo agregar by them. Emily is being looked after by them. The last one, they will talk about the event for years. They will talk about the event for years. Aquí tienen, um, por ejemplo, will make, will be. Aquí pueden como ir eh, auxiliándose. Eh? Eh, will, en pasivo, will be. Cuando es eh, presente continuo, lo que viene aquí, I am making, is being made. Uh -huh. Y volvamos ahí. Eh? Uh, they will talk about the event for years. Uh, the event uh, will be talk uh, about for years. Excellent. That's correct, Alexis. Thank you so much. The event will be talked about for years. Excellent. Now we're going to focus on this chart since ya en esta parte ya dejamos eh, un poquito lo que es la teoría y vamos a practicar más. Tenemos listening, tenemos conversaciones con audio. Así es que pues, y siempre vamos a seguir con la voz pasiva, pero nos vamos a enfocar en unos cuantos. Eh, eh, anteriormente estuvimos enfocados en la pasiva en present perfect y en present continuous. Ahorita vamos a ver unos en pasado. Modern wonders. What are modern wonders? Modern wonders. Son las maravillas modernas. Let's see. A volunteer to read about the Lotus Temple. The Lotus Temple. Okay. The Lotus Temple in Delhi, India was finished in 1986. Its lotus-shaped leaves are made of marble. marble. A volunteer to read about the Museum of Contemporary Art. Your teacher. Thank you. The Museum of Contemporary Arts in Niterói, Brazil, 
is a modern saucer shaper structure. Ah, uh, okay. A um, modern saucer shaped structure. Yeah, es como un salsero moderno. Okay. Excellent. Thank, Thank you so much for okay. reading. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you. Um, de miro piadu. Ellis is friends. <laughs> Volunteers to read about this one. Tell me your coach. Um, the middle of over the over the Tan River in France was opening in 2004 is the tallest bridge in the world. Uh-huh. Excellent. Thank you so much. So we have um yes. 2004, cuando decimos, eh, podemos decirlo 2004, lo que decíamos ayer, decirlo todo completo, 2004, o cuando hay un cero ahí para dividirlo en dos cifras, el cero se pronuncia, como dijimos ayer? O. Oh. O. Oh. Yes. Thank you so much. Sería 2004. Thank you so much for reading. Now, the national study in Beijing, China. Thank you, teacher. Thank you. The national stadium is Beijing. China is also known as the bird's nest because of its unique appearance. Appearance, okay. 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 Thank you so much, my dear. And the last one, the Palm Island. Me teacher, mm -hmm. the Pan Islands of Dubai, U U A N, were designed to look like palm trees. Construction was started in 2001. Excellent. Thank you so much for reading. As you can see, that they are um they are using the simple past passive voice. Um, was finished in, and they start with the object. No dice los arquitectos fulano, sino que the Lotus Temple in Delhi, India was finished in. Yes. Um, so, as in, in, this is very common. Es bien común ver la passive voice en este tipo de, de lecturas. Uh, it, it's very important. The perspective. Empire State Building is... Um, have you been there? This is in New York. Have What's you heard? Going huh? What's going on, teacher? Uh, I, I, I <laughs> felt it was uh, an earthquake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I felt that like it was shaken here. <laughs> y ayer igual estaba aquí y fue bien fuerte. <laughs> Entonces sentí como que algo tembló ahorita, pero quizás no. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> yes, I was like, I'm getting crazy maybe. <laughs> but okay. Seguimos aquí. <laughs> Mejor que se vaya liberando de a poquito esa energía. <laughs> y a Marilyn confirma, tembló. Igual, no, no puede ser. Okay, let's continue. The... The Empire State Building. How much do you know about the Empire State Building? It's in USA, New York. It's in USA, New York. What else do you know? This is a it's a very big building. Yeah, it's a very tall, it's very tall, but it's very not tall. the tallest building in the world. I see, it was designed by an American architect, I don't know. It's in New York, yes. It was officially opened by the President of United States in 1931. Do you know? Is it true? Is it true sentence? 
We don't know. It took five years to build. It cost two million to build. There are 102 floors in the building. There are colored lights at the top. It is the tallest building in the world. Um, I only checked two. Yo solo chequeé dos. <laughs> solo sé dos cosas. It's in New York and, and what, is, what is the other one? It's in New York. And number seven, there are colored lights at the top. Teacher, if have other option, maybe. Uh -huh. Como agregar otra opción aparte de falso y verdadero, algo como tal vez. Oh, uh, one maybe. <laughs> yes. Probably, yes. That, that's a good suggestion. Okay, I'll, I'll give you time for you to maybe write the ones that you think are true. Because I know that um, maybe we didn't have time to print this. So you can maybe do it on your notebook. Check the ones that you think are true. Or the ones that you know. Ready for the listening? Number three is true. Okay, so you think number three, it was officially opened by the president of United States? Yes. Mm -hmm. Según, Likely, yeah. Según Google. Oh, you're, ah, no, you're cheating. Está haciendo trampa. Okay, uh, let's. Play the recording, voy a cambiar de. Para ponerles el audio y en el audio van a escuchar los datos acerca del Empire State Building. Ok. Let me start sharing for the listening. Making this bigger. Thank you. Okay, let's listen to the audio and let's see how much do we know. Unit 11. It's really worth seeing. Page 72, exercise 2. Perspectives. The Empire State Building. Part B. Now listen and check your answers. What information is the most surprising? Okay, folks, here we are in the Empire State Building. The history of the Empire State Building is filled with many interesting facts and figures. It was designed by American architect William Lamb to become the tallest building in the world. Construction began in March 1930, and by October of that same year, 88 floors were already finished. In 1931, after 14 months and $25 million, the building's 102 floors were officially opened by U.S. President Herbert Hoover. In 1964, colored lights were added to the top by the building's owners. The colors change almost every night. While it's no longer the world's tallest building, it is still seen as a symbol of New York City, and people from all over the world visit the building every year. It has even been featured in some of Hollywood's biggest films, including King Kong and Sleepless in Seattle. Ok, 
Which of these sentences are um, okay? Which of these sentences are true for the listening for the audio? You want to listen one more time? Repeat, please, teacher. Ajá, podemos escucharlo y en el cuaderno, yo sé que toma mucho tiempo escribir todo eso, pero podemos escribir solo los números y chequear qué número de oración es la que está eh, en el audio, como verdadero, un fact verdadero según el audio. Ok, I will play the recording once again. Unit 11. It's really worth seeing. Page 72, exercise 2. Perspectives. The Empire State Building. Part B. Now listen and check your answers. What information is the most surprising? Okay, folks, here we are in the Empire State Building. The history of the Empire State Building is filled with many interesting facts and figures. It was designed by American architect William Lamb to become the tallest building in the world. Construction began in March 1930, and by October of that same year, 88 floors were already finished. In 1931, after 14 months and $25 million, the building's 102 floors were officially opened by U.S. President Herbert Hoover. In 1964, colored lights were added to the top by the building's owners. The colors change almost every night. While it's no longer the world's tallest building, it is still seen as a symbol of New York City, and people from all over the world visit the building every year. It has even been featured in some of Hollywood's biggest films, including King Kong and Sleepless in Seattle. Time. Unit 11. It's really worth seeing. Page 72, Exercise 2, Perspectives. The Empire State Building. Part B. Now listen and check your answers. What information is the most surprising? Okay, folks, here we are in the Empire State Building. The history of the Empire State Building is filled with many interesting facts and figures. It was designed by American architect William Lamb to become the tallest building in the world. Construction began in March 1930, and by October of that same year, 88 floors were already finished. In 1931, after 14 months and $25 million, the building's 102 floors were officially opened by U.S. President Herbert Hoover. In 1964, colored lights were added to the top by the building's owners. The colors change almost every night. While it's no longer the world's tallest building, it is still seen as a symbol of New York City, and people from all over the world visit the building every year. It has even been featured in some of Hollywood's biggest films, including King Kong and Sleepless in Seattle. Okay, which ones did you hear are here in the audio? Number one, it Number. was designed by an American architect. Uh-huh. Number two, it is in New York City. Uh-huh. Number three. Yes. It, it was officially opened by the president of the United States in 1931. 1931, uh-huh. I, 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 I
It's Terry, hijo. Uh, but in 1930, it, they started the construction. In the, uh, in the uh, 30, they started. Empezaron en, en 1930, ajá. Uh -huh. In the same year, dice, pero bueno. Entonces, sí, es correcto. Ajá. Uh -huh. okay. Number seven, two. Number color lights at the top. Yes. Yeah, excellent. Number one, two, three, six, and seven. <laughs> excellent. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. Well, uh, with this, we are going to be practicing as you can see. Y, and we have this in our material. También les mandé esta partecita del grammar focus. Passive with by and simple past. El by lo, lo ocupamos para decir. Que by es. Who was the author? ¿Quién fue el autor? ¿Verdad? El by introduce a what? El autor. Uh, the passive changes to focus of a sentence for simple past. Use the past of be más el pasado participio. Uh, active. The president opened the building in 1931. Passive. It was opened by the president in 1931. Y el it, podríamos poner the building was opened. Aquí se dice it porque ya sabemos que se está refiriendo al edificio. So that's it. Um, an American architect decide, designed the building. For passive, it was designed by an American architect. So yes, um, vamos a estar practicando la passive voice con el pasado simple. So remember, um, vamos a estar usando estas estructuras que vemos aquí y el by para introducir quién fue el autor, así como lo hicimos anteriormente. Les voy a poner el audio del grammar focus para que escuchen por pronunciación. Page 73, exercise 3, grammar focus. Passive with by, simple past. The passive changes the focus of a sentence. For the simple past, Use the past of be plus past participle. Active. The president opened the building in 1931. Passive. It was opened by the president in 1931. Active. An American architect designed the building. Passive. It was designed by an American architect. Active. In 1964, the building's owners added colored lights to the top. Passive. Colored lights were added to the top by the building's owners in 1964. Okay, now there we have um, this exercise. Let me make it smaller so we can see it complete. Complete the sentences with the simple past, passive form of the verbs, and then we are going to compare. So for the first one, the 2000, 2010 work group Final, and we have the verb in parentheses by Spain. ¿Cómo completamos eso? What? Only one? Is one. Um, no. Remember that is a so, estamos con passive and simple past. Was. 
was one. Uh -huh. Ya, yeah, nos quedaría así. The two, 2010 World Cup final was won by Spain. You can write on your notebook the complete sentence plus the answer. La primera, no sé si la pueden ver acá en este cuadrito chiquito está. Sí se mira el cuadrito. Or no? Yes, sí, 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 sí. Okay. Ahí está la uno. And then you can complete the rest of them and we will check in a while. The film Avatar was directed by James Cook. Excellent, Aymara. That is correct. The film Avatar was directed by James Cameron. Les voy a dar tiempo para que las escriban en su cuaderno y luego chequeamos.
Ya no estoy tocado, mamá. No estoy tocado. No, Have you finished? Yes, teacher. Okay. Can you read the number three? Yes. The novel, the novel, the adventures of Hulk, Hulk, <laughs> Hulk the very thin. Uh, was wrote by Mark Twain. Was wrote? No. Written. Yes, written. Excellent. Thank you, Mara. Let's remember the verb to be participle form. Excellent job. Thank you so much. Uh, number four, volunteers. The song's revolution in Hey Jude was recorded by the Beatles in 1968. Yes, thank you, Luis. Was recorded by the Beatles in 1968. Very good. Um, four, that was number four. Now, volunteer for number five, the third night. Volunteer. Star night. Then you have that one. Do you need more time? The starry night was Painting by Vincent Van Gogh. Ah, uh -huh, excellent. The Starry Night was painted by Vincent Van Gogh. Excellent. The Shanghai Grand Teacher, Grand Theater, <laughs> number six. Volunteer, the Shanghai Grand Theater. The Shanghai Grand Peter was designed by French architect Jean Marie Charpentier. Charpentier. Excellent. Thank you so much. It's correct. And number seven, the opening ceremony. The opening ceremony. The opening ceremony, ceremony of the twenty. I for the twelve. Twelve. Uh huh. London All Olympics. Where, ah, no, was that by billions of people? Was seen. Uh, was seen by billions of people. Very good. Thank you so much for participating. Now, the last one, number eight. Number eight. Volunteer for number eight.
the 2007 In that 2007 film, I'm not there. The American music, Bob Dylan, was played by six different people, including Australian actress Kate Blush. Excellent. Thank you so much, again. As it was played. Thank you so much. Now I'm going to stop for a little while so that we can check attendance. And after I check attendance, we will continue practicing the simple past passive voice. Abigail Elizabeth Flores. I'm here, teacher. Thank you. Abigail Mejia Mendoza. Present, teacher. Thank you. Carlos Alberto Castro. Present, teacher. Thank you. Carlos Emilio Coto. Carlos Humberto Estrada. Present, Thank you. Cecia Noemi Ramos. Present, Thank you. Francisco Ernesto. Present, Thank you. Gerson Alexis. Gertrude Saimara. Present teacher. Hazel Vanessa. Julissa Yamilet. Julissa Yamilet Vialta. Carla Ivania Anaya. Present teacher. Thank you, Carla. Luis Javier. Here, Miss. Thank you. Martiel Esau. Present teacher. Thank you. Marilyn Alejandra. Present. Thank you. Mario Ernesto. Present. Thank you. Melanie Alexandra. Melanie Alexandra. Yes, Samuel Antonio. Santos Cristina. Thank you. Victor Noé. Present teacher. Thank you. Okay, let's see. I have. Thank you, Carlos, Emilio, and Alexis. Present coach. Thank you, Alexis. Thank you, Carlos Emilio. Present teacher. Okay. Okay. Um, now we're going to continue sharing. We have a conversation related to the same topic. And for this one, we do have audio. So that's amazing. Uh, just let me find it. Uh, Okay. Um, 
think it's bigger now. Okay. Okay, uh, we're going to listen to this conversation and then we're going to practice it. I guess we still have, yes, we have 20 minutes. Let me continue sharing some. We're going to listen the whole thing and then you let me know if there is any question about vocabulary. Page 75, exercise eight, conversation. I need some information. Part A, listen and practice. Hello? Oh, hello. I need some information. What currency is used in the European Union? Where? The European Union. I think the euro is used in most of Europe. Oh, right. And is English spoken much there? I really have no idea. Huh. Well, what about credit cards? Are they accepted everywhere? How would I know? Well, you're a travel agent, aren't you? What? This is a hair salon. You have the wrong number. You want to listen one more time? Do you have any questions yes, about please. the camera? Yeah, okay. I'm going to play it one more time. Page 75, exercise 8, conversation. I need some information. Part A, listen and practice. Hello? Oh, hello. I need some information. What currency is used in the European Union? Where? The European Union. I think the euro is used in most of Europe. Oh, right. And is English spoken much there? I really have no idea. Huh. Well, what about credit cards? Are they accepted everywhere? How would I know? Well, you're a travel agent, aren't you? What? This is a hair salon. You have the wrong number. Okay, questions, vocabulary, pronunciation. Currency. What's currency? currency? What is the meaning of currency? Currency is moneda. What currency is used in the European Union? Es que moneda es utilizada en la Unión Europea. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. Any other question? Okay, I'm going to play the recording one more time and I'm going to stop so that you can repeat at home. Page 75, exercise eight, conversation. I need some information. Part A, listen and practice. Hello? Oh, hello. Oh, I need some information. What currency is used in the European Union? Where? The European Union. In? I think the euro is used in most of Europe. Oh. Oh, right. And is English spoken much there?
there? I really have no idea. Huh. Well, what about credit cards? Are they accepted everywhere? How would I know? Well, you're a travel agent, aren't you? What? This is a hair salon. You have the wrong number. Let's practice one more time before you do the road, please. Page 75, Exercise 8, Conversation. I need some information. Part A. Listen and practice. Hello? Oh, hello. I need some information. What currency is used in the European Union? Where? The European Union? I think the euro is used in most of Europe. Oh, right. And is English spoken much there? I really have no idea. Huh. Well, what about credit cards? Are they accepted everywhere? How would I know? Well, you're a travel agent, aren't you? What? This is a hair salon. You have the wrong number. Okay, volunteers to role play. Me, teacher. Okay, I we have one volunteer, I think it's Aymara. A, volu uh -huh, a volunteer to role play with Aymara. Okay, Magdiel, thank you so much. You can start, Aymara. Okay. Hello. Oh, hello. I need some information. What currency is used in the European Union? Yes. The European Union. I think the euro is used in most of Europe. All right. Uh, and is English spoken much there? I really have no idea. Um, well, what about credit cards? Are they accepted everywhere? Well, how will I know? Well, you are tra you are travel agents, aren't you? What? The this is a hair salon. Have the one number. Sorry. 
Okay, very good job with pronunciation. Would you like to switch roles? Okay, please. Okay, you okay. start. Hello. Oh, hello. I need some information. What currency is, is used in the European Union? Where? The European Union. I think the Europe is using the most of Europe. Europe. All right. And is English spoken much there? I really know. I really have no idea. Huh. Well, what about credit cards? Are they accepted everywhere? How would I know? Well, you're a travel agent, aren't you? What? This is an air salon. How do you the wrong number? Okay, pretty good. Thank you so much for practicing. You did it pretty, pretty good. I think okay. the vocabulary so also is like more friendly. <laughs> Tenemos un vocabulario más amigable ahora. So yes, and you did it great. And uh, do we have two more volunteers? Two more volunteers? Hmm. Okay, Luis, and who wants to practice with Luis? <clears throat> Me, teacher. Uh, okay. Okay, I can. Hello. Yes. Oh, hello. I need some information. What currency is used in the European Union? Where? The European Union. I think that you is used in most of Europe. <clears throat> Mm -hmm. All right. And uh, is English spoken much there? <clears throat> I really have no, no idea. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, uh, what about credit cards? Are they accepted everywhere? How oh, will I know? <laughs> well, well, you're a travel agent, agent aren't you? What? This is a high salon. You have to wrong number. Okay, pretty good. Pretty good. Yes, I know. Um, the vocabulary here is very friendly. Es bastante amigable el vocabulario. Lo hicieron muy bien. Um, that's the European. European. Uh, the Euro. And Europe. Uh, agent. Travel agent. Now you can change. Luis, you can start. Hello. Oh, hello. I need some information. What score is used in the European Union? European Union. Where? European. European Union. European. Where? The European Union. I think the Europe is used it's in most of Europe. All oh, right, <clears throat> and is English spoken much there? I really have no idea. Oh, well, what about credit cards? Are they accepting everywhere? How will I know? Well, you're a travel agent, aren't you? What? This is a air salon. You have a there the wrong number. Okay, excellent. This is a hair salon, hair salon. Excellent, you did it very nice. Um, do we have two more? Todavía tenemos chance separadas más. Yes, no? No more volunteers? That's okay. All right, so we're going to continue then. Let me check what is the next exercise. Okay, all right. Let me show the presentation again. 
Uh, this is the conversation that you just practice. Okay, here you have it. And uh, then we have the passive without by, in simple present. Okay, and anteriormente estuvimos practicando la voz pasiva en pasado simple usando by, ¿verdad? Como se pudieron eh, dar cuenta en la conversación, estábamos usando voz pasiva en presente simple. Uh, siempre vamos a usar el verbo en participio, en todas las voces pasivas, no importa en qué tiempo sea, siempre va a ser pasado participio. Solo vamos a ir cambiando los auxiliares o modales dependiendo de qué tiempo sea. Si es eh, simple present, estamos usando am, um, is, are y en the verb in past participle. Y aquí tienen el ejemplo eh, activa. They use the Europe in most of Europe. Okay. Eh, ellos usan el euro en la mayor parte de Europa. Esos son hechos, so, por eso se usa presente simple, ¿verdad? En pasivo, eh, presente um, en voz pasiva, esta sería de euro is used in most Europe. Okay. Aquí vemos eh, siempre el euro y luego el forma del verbo to be más el verbo en pasado participio, el verbo principal. Y luego el complemento. Tengo un ejemplo. They speak English in many European countries. Pasado en voz pasiva nos sale. English is spoken in many European countries. They, manu they manufacture a lot of cars in Europe. A lot of cars are manufactured in Europe. Uh -huh. Entonces, bueno, ahorita nos, mañana seguiríamos pas, partiendo desde aquí. Vamos a estar utilizando passive voice en presente simple y no vamos a estar mencionando como los subjects. So, If you don't have any questions, si hay alguien que tenga preguntas, alguna duda, comentario, if no, no questions, no comments. Okay, then uh, you are free to go and see you tomorrow. Nice to tomorrow. Bye, teacher. Okay.